So we all have something that we're dealing with that we might think that is ungodly or that we know is ungodly. But it's it's a stronghold and it is very hard to stop doing or get rid of. All of us have something. Some of us have some of our lists are longer than others. But nevertheless, we do it out of guilt or we do it against our will, should I say, because it's not really a choice. It's just there and it bothers us. And I say and the Bible says that we we can choose to do whatever we want, which is true. But some things are just too strong just to to just stop instantly doing. I know this for a fact. I, I drank for 25 years or so, maybe 20 to 30 years, and it was grievously hard to stop drinking. I mean, I, it was horrif- horrifically hard, and I wanted to stop. I did everything that I could to stop, but it was s- extremely hard. And there was other things that I had to deal with, too. It was anger, and it was pornography, and there was... So many things. You know, some some of these things are harder to quit than uh, heroin because they have such tremendous stronghold. Some people have gambling. What is it that you're dealing with that you just know you want to stop and that you are afraid to go to God about? Well, don't be afraid to go to him. And it says so right here in Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. What is it? Is it video games? Are you a video game addict? Is it the TV set? You have a problem with not watching it? You turn it on as soon as you come in the house and just leave it on all day long and it's programming you the wrong way and your family? Is it music? I know I had a stronghold of music that was that I I got rid of that stronghold but I just had to want to do it. It wasn't that hard. Music is something you can just turn off. Well, it was for me. Unless you're a musician, of course, then you may have a real hard problem with stop playing the wrong types of music. I used to listen to rap music. And you know that can be very dangerous. And they have Christian rap music out there. And that's it. see, the thing about it is they, the beats in the background, they're not godly. They're worldly. And uh, you have to get them out of your system, out of your mind, because they have the wrong frequencies in them and they make you do the wrong things. I, I accidentally heard some rap music last night and it actually had witchcraft programming, uh, MK Ultra programming in the background of it. So it was, if people are listening to that type of music, they're being programmed with rich witchcraft and they don't even realize it. You know, some people listen to country music and I have, no, I have nothing against anybody listening to any type of music. It's just that, you know, if you know that it's wrong, you know, programming you in the wrong way, you know, then it should be an issue with you if you're really trying to press into the Lord. You know, if you're really trying to get to know a closer relationship with God. You know, we're going to have to cut some things out of our lives in order for us to grow in him, in order to move up to different levels. A lot of people want to see the Lord Jesus Christ walk in the room and sit down in a chair and have a conversation with him. It's probably not going to happen if you're not pure enough as you could possibly be. We got to work on our purity. You see, that's what the, 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 the these are jobs that the Lord wants has appointed for us to work on. You know, if it's anger, what, if, what about anger? Could be that bit. That's a big one. And sometimes it takes years to process these things out of our system. And we got to get on top of it now. And you know, you're not expected to work on every single thing, every single problem that you have at the same time. That could be way too difficult. But you can work on one of them at a time. It might be smoking cigarettes. If, you, if you're guilty about that and, you know, if you know that the Lord doesn't want you doing it. You know, and you have a problem with praying, you know, because you're guilt, you feel guilty before going before God, then it's probably something you need to work on and you need to smack the guilt out away because you never should feel guilty going before God. If you're trying, if you're working hard on getting rid of things uh, out of your life that you that you don't need inside of your life, 
you know, go to the Lord with these things. He says it right here in Habakkuk chapter two he says, write the vision, write it down and make it plain upon the table uh, that it may, uh, that he may run that readeth it. Well, who is he? That's the enemy. That's Satan. That's the devil. That, those are the demons. The Lord is saying, write it down on a, write, write it on a piece of paper. Write what you want. Write what you, if you don't want to do these things, now it's a different thing if you want to do these things. It's not going to happen if you really, really press it in and really want to continue doing, you know, being an alcoholic or, or, you know, being a pothead or whatever, you know, whatever you do, you know, be doing pornography it might not work. You got to have a desire there inside of you and press into it and you write it down, write it down and make it plain upon the tables that, it, that the enemy once the enemy knows that you don't want to do these things, then he'll eventually run when he reads it. You write them down on some paper, write them on your heart. Okay, for the vision is yet appointed. But in the end, see, once you write it, it's appointed. And then at the end, it'll speak. That means it's going to come to pass. It might be a month. It might be a week. It might be a day. It might be instantly. It might be take a year. But um, you keep working on it. You keep going to God about this thing um, over and over and over, and it will lose its grip because the Bible says that he, he is mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. These are strongholds, and God will pull them off of you, and he will do it. But you keep going to him, and you don't go. You, you, of course, they're shameful acts. You know, there, a lot of things are. Not everything. Watching TV is not a shameful act. It can be nowadays because of the programming that, that, that's on um, on these things. And listening to music can be shameful also, too, because there's a lot of terrible programming music. And the reason, there's a reason why they call these programs, because they're programming your mind for the future. And so, and there's a reason why they call them channels, TV channels, because they're channeling uh, spirits right into your brain. So, you know, pick something. You know, I've got things I'm working on, too. I'm not perfect either. But, you know, I really want to work for God. I want to work hard for him. And I want to be able to stand in front of him and say, yeah, I did the best that I possibly can. And I know that you were speaking with me about this, this area in my life. And I, and I worked on it. And I want to stand... Um, um, I want to stand up upon my watch for you. I want to. I want to set. I want to set um, myself on the tower for you, and for the world to see. Look, I did this. I did it. You know, or I, I want to be able to tell myself, I did it. I'm doing it. I'm taking care of this issue. I'm going to the Lord. I'm talking to the Lord, and I'm not ashamed. And He He has forgiven me. I'm forgiven. And he understands, but he wants me to work on these things because these are tests and these are trials. And I am, I am um, going to pass these tests or I have passed that test. It's great to be able to know that you passed a test, whether it was simple. And then even if it, especially if it's diff a difficult thing, like pornography is a very, very hard one to do. It's like gambling or doing heroin. And if you can overcome that, you've overcome a great thing. Just keep your eyes to yourself. Turn your eyes away. Turn them up, turn them down, turn them sideways. But keep them, keep your eyes, you know, be, keep control of what's going inside of your eyes. Keep control if it's music, you know. Keep control of what's going inside of your ears, inside of your brain, you know, because it's your, your property. You own it. And you just press in and you try and you try and you try and you do the best that you can. Whatever your issue is, go ahead and write them all down. And then start working on one. And see, so you sit on it. You sit at that tower and watch for the Lord and be an example to yourself, to your children, to your family. You, when, when these family celebrations come around, don't be tempted to go in there and do whatever. You stand fast in the Lord. Stay away from that booze. Stay away from the joints or whatever they're smoking. Stay away from the, 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 the filth, the, the stuff. And be the example. Be the one that sticks out. You know, if you have to leave, you know, these situations, you know, party situations or whatever, leave. Don't stay there. 
You know, put God first if you want to, because that's what it's all going to come down to. We're in the end times now. It's no more time to be playing around. You know, we got we might have a decade left. And if we got a decade left, you definitely want to press in now because you don't want to be shocked or surprised at some of the things that are going to be happening here in the next 10 years, because there's going to be a lot of things happening. And you're going to have to make some some big decisions here in the next decade. For you and your family and your church, people in your churches, too, if you if you have a position inside of your church. So and you want to be ready. You don't want to be shocked. When these things happen, you don't want to be stunned because everyone around you will be. I guarantee it. And you want to learn as much as you can about the end times and what's going on right now and what's going to be happening here um, in the in the next in the next decade. We got the worldwide uh, government uh, uh, that's already set up and ready to go. They just haven't implemented it yet. They're worldwide. The religion that's happening right now, it's already set up. The Pope is getting ready to have a meeting here on, in March of 2020. That's going to they've already signed every all every uh, denomination has already went over there be, uh, a couple of years ago and, um, and signed a, a worldwide religion declaration. And they're going to do it again here in March. So um, that's every religion. It's every church. You know, not not every church, but mostly all, every single church that you've ever even heard of. Not all pastors are are with it, but uh, the majority is with it. And we're gonna we got the uh, mark of the beast coming up here within probably the next five or six years. That's gonna be happening. You're gonna have to make major decisions about that for you and your family, or whether you're gonna take it or not. If it comes to America, I don't know. But I know in other parts of the world, it's already um, set up and ready to go. People are, will take it because they're they're poor and they're broke. They can't get jobs already. They can't even hardly eat, and they can't they can't they can't get fresh water, and they don't have places to live and stuff like that. So it's already set up in a lot of other places around the world to do. Now, whether if it comes to America, you'll be faced with that issue also too. We got the two witnesses coming here. Um, it's about five, six, seven years or such, something like that. Are you going to be ready for that? Are you a part of the Moses company or the Elijah company or both? Because there's there's companies uh, for the remnant to actually go out and do powerful things for God using the seven spirits, the seven angels, the seven powers of God, which is in each and every last one of us. And we are going to have those powers. Um, but if you're not ready for them, you may not be selected for that. You may be standing on the side. Are you ready for the rapture? Because it's going to be after the tribulation. If you're going to, if you're here for the tribulation, it's going to be a rough one. It's going to be a tough, tough situation. It's all hell is going to break loose on the earth, and you need to be ready and get your family ready for that also too. It's no more jokes. It's no more playing. No more playing around. It's uh, in in game time. It is on. Now, so press in and get serious about God as much as you can and get as pure as you can and um, and let God be able to use you when he needs you, because there's going to be billions of people coming to Christ. I mean, millions and millions and tens of thousands and billions of people coming to Christ here in the end times. And if you want to be a part of that, uh, uh, gathering up uh, the, 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 the harvest, get yourself ready. <laughs> 